On the 50th anniversary of this unveiling, we are privileged to hear a seldom heard recording of the remarks sent to the Choate School, in which President Kennedy reminds us that, quote, the inheritance of wealth creates responsibilities. So does privilege in education. His remarks remain remarkably contemporary and vital today. And after hearing the recording, we will also hear from President Kennedy's nephew and Choate parent, Ted Kennedy Jr. On America's historic legacy of public servants, and the important role that Chuck Rosemary Hall continues to play in terms of instilling public responsibility in every one of his students. Thank you. I have to just say, I'm filled with a little bit of nervousness and trepidation because I've had the challenge of having to follow many gifted speakers. But following my uncle is an experience that I've never prepared for. <laughs> My first reaction is that my uncle's words and message are so clear, they hardly need elaboration. Despite the, the recording from many years ago, his message of 50 years ago seems amazingly contemporary and timeless because of the issues that he addresses, namely his observations that diversity is one of America's strengths and that the purpose of a Choate education is to look beyond the horizons of our own immediate lives. I would like to offer just a few personal observations, both as a younger member of the Kennedy family and a proud member of the Choke community. My son Teddy is here with me. He's a third former. My daughter graduated last year, and I'm joined by my wife Kiki as well. And uh, it's what, what comes through immediately is the tremendous gratitude and fondness. Uh, that my Uncle Jack always felt for Cho, as did my Uncle Joe, who graduated from Cho two years before him. They were enormously grateful for the learning experiences and friendships that they developed here. Both frequently spoke about Cho as being the best experience of their lives, and he was so proud of the alumni recognition in 1958 and the portrait unveiling in 1963. And he also spoke about winning a, a less notable distinction, the prize of the most days ever spent in the Cho Infirmary. <coughs> um, in his remark, Uncle Jack recognized what a privilege it was to attend a world-class boarding school and that this was an opportunity afforded to only a small number of people. He was always very appreciative of his good fortune and he never took it for granted. He valued his fellow classmates and alumni, and he always held them in high esteem. His remarks spoke to the importance of public service and the responsibility that all children's students have to making the world a better place. Although it's clear that he equated public service with government service, we know today that public service can take many forms, and I think he would agree. He also spoke about equal opportunity, and he worried candidly and openly that prestigious educational institutions like Choke should be careful that they don't inadvertently promote class divisions, and that because of their unique role in American society, schools like Choke had an affirmative obligation to better represent what he called the diversity of American life. I also like what he said about the role that the role of education was to, quote, prepare young men and women for service to the community and the nation. How remarkably liberated for a man to say in the early 1960s. Another important theme of his remarks is the idea of communitarianism. Communitarianism is the idea that we are all part of a greater society and that the goal of education is not just to enable personal success, but to promote future leaders who will work towards political and economic fairness for everyone. I have with me just, I went through some of the letters that were exchanged between my uncle uh, and, uh, and the, my grandmother and showed, it was, it's remarkable, the collection, because if you can imagine at the time, uh, writing home twice a week over a four year period, my family has a collection of about 250 letters that my Uncle Jack corresponded with very mem various members of the family, and it's an incredible record, and there's a number of letters here in the, in, in the Choate Library as well. 
one letter just to, uh, uh, that's a reflection of, of his experience here, which was not unlike every other Cho student. Um, it was in a letter to Mrs. Saint, uh, that Mrs. St. John wrote to my grandmother, Rose. She said, quote, Jack and Joe came over to tea this afternoon. Dr. Curtis, do you still have teas? Um, after discussing how skinny Jack was, she says, quote, he is taking his cod liver oil regularly. <laughs> Visits the tuck shop on the recommendation of Mr. Massey for an eggnog. And he dislikes his vegetables and salads, she says. Um, I also have a copy here of the very first letter that John F. Kennedy wrote home when he was a brand new student in the fall of 1931, 14 years old. He says, Dear Mother and Dad, this is a pretty good school and I've had a lot of fun so far. We begin to study tomorrow. He talks to them. Uh, he, he says, he talks about how his roommate and how he's decorated his room and that he doesn't have any pillows or a bedspread. He has to borrow a bedspread from his roommate and he asks his parents to send him his favorite stuffed owl from home. So, um, and actually this letter was, was something that my wife and I uh, presented to our daughter Kylie, the original we had it framed and presented to her when she graduated from Choke last year. So, uh, needless to say, we are all very sentimental about the attachment that we have uh, to this school. Um, in closing, um, when JFK uttered his famous words, ask not what your country can do for you, many Chode alumni said they heard a familiar echo of Headmaster St. John. Today we know that St. John often challenged his students to ask not what Chode has done for you, but what you can do for Chode. It is clear to me that these words resonated with my uncle in a very profound way and help shape his life and worldview. However, as the parent of two teenagers, I know that words without example or action are empty, hypocritical, and ineffective. I firmly believe that St. John's ethic must have been reinforced on a daily basis by Choate's teachers, traditions, and values, and embodied in everything that Choate stood for and continues to stand for today. It is this essence and ethos that sets Choate apart and why Choate will continue to be a model for education for many years to come. Thank you.